The movie industry has not had much to cheer about during COVID-19, but some signs of optimism over the weekend with Warner Brothers' Tenet, a highly anticipated Christopher Nolan film, which not in the U.S. yet, but began to open in theaters around the world, many international markets, also opening in Canada. Well received, grossing upwards of $53 million US with a big chunk of that, about 5 million on IMAX cinemas. Let's get some perspective and some of the takeaways now from Rich Gelfond. Rich is the CEO of IMAX. Rich, always nice to have you with us. Thanks for being back on BNM Bloomberg. Great to see you, John. Tell us a little bit more about this weekend, the feedback you were getting, what you were doing, what you were watching, and what the takeaway is for you. Yeah, I think there were three really important takeaways. The first one was that um, where it's safe, people really want to go to the movies. And um, there's some other context. There were, as you say, this was the first North American blockbuster, uh, but there was a Chinese blockbuster, a Korean blockbuster before. So people really want to go to the movies. The second is where there are capacity limitations, which there are everywhere, including in Canada. Uh, people are spreading out. So it's not like it was previously everyone wanted to go Friday and Saturday night. It seems like this is an adjustment in behavior where people will try and go whatever time works for them. And the third thing is people are really seeking out the IMAX experience. And we did close to 10% of the worldwide gross. And considering the fact that in most countries, only 50% of the seats were available to sell for sale, I mean, Think of that, the seat next to you, the seat behind you. So you had largely empty theaters. In Canada, in most provinces, only 50 people were allowed in the theaters. And to do those kinds of numbers in IMAX was very, very encouraging. And what's been the strategy for getting the word out that the experience is safe. Um, there was a lot of social media buzz where one of the biggest stars in the world, Tom Cruise, went to see a screening of Tenet at an IMAX theater in London. And I think a lot of people saw that. I mean, it was very interesting for me and I was talking with my wife about it. You know, you got people, you see Cruise, masked up, he goes into the theater, you know, a fairly big crowd. Um, you know, what, what has been some of the messaging um, that, that you and others in the industry have been doing uh, around this? Well, I think you have to start with the reality, which is you've got to make sure it's a safe environment. And that includes masks for all the employees, masks for all the customers, social distancing, which we talked a little bit about, um, extra cleaning, extra precautions, dealing with the concessions in a way that people feel safe, that nobody is touching things and getting too close to them. And then after you deal with that reality, I think you have to figure out how to communicate it. And, you know, the, Tom is a great friend of IMAX and the movie business. And, you know, that was great. And there were other people who went to theaters around the world. Then I think there's word of mouth. Um, I mentioned briefly in China, Last week, a blockbuster opened and it did 115 million people. And the numbers during the week were on a relative basis even stronger. And I think word of mouth starts going. People say, hey, I felt safe. I was safe. And that gets more people feeling comfortable. And, you know, that's one reason I really think Warner did something very smart, which was at some point someone had to be first and get it open because I think it was easy to you know, worry about things that weren't really real. And I think it's hard for all of us to get back to our normal lives. But I think once it starts and you go and you really enjoy it and you see a communal experience, you're gonna to wanna to go more. And I think that's the trend that this starts. So let's talk about what this weekend experience, and you guys put out a statement about it, uh, informs you of and, and what kind of cr uh, expectations it creates for you as we await tenant opening in U.S. Cin cinemas. I guess currently the sort of the Labor Day weekend uh, is the plan for that. So, John, one of the things um, people might not realize is how novel um, this release pattern was. So historically, films are released either the same time around the world or first in the United States and Canada. And um, one of the keys to that is New York and L.A. being open. So it became clear 
that New York and LA were not going to be open. So Warner Brothers could have packed its tent and could have waited and said, well, we'll wait for that to happen. But the fact is, a lot of the world is safer than New York and LA. And, you know, places like um, China and other places in Asia and some places in Europe, there are very, very few cases and it was safe. So they turned the model on its head and they said, let's start opening internationally first and then we'll come to the US later. And there was another interesting component, which is they opened Canada before the United States. That virtually never happens. And I think looking at the results coming out of those territories, and I think especially in Canada, where the box office correlates to the US box office, you know, they, they're giving uh, consumers confidence, they're giving their exhibition partners confidence, they're giving IMAX confidence, that this kind of model works and hopefully it'll roll into other titles as well going forward. Well, we'll, we'll certainly see what happens on that front. And I, I guess the nice thing about a Christopher Nolan movie is we all seem to have a different takeaway. So, you know, not as worried about giving away the plot line when we're all usually blown away and have different takeaways from a film like this. But it, it obviously a lot of people really excited to see this one. You've got this narrative, Rich, playing out at the same time that we're about to have another narrative because obviously don't have to tell you Disney is going to be releasing through their Disney Plus streaming service. Mulan, which was meant to be released earlier this year, and that once again is going to build the narrative of what do you do going forward? Do you, do you use these high-profile streaming services for blockbuster-type films, or can we rely on the traditional theater experience? Um, what is your view? Is it At this point, is it that both of these can exist, essentially? There's no question, John, that that's the answer. Both of them could exist, and I think especially for mid-level movies where marketing costs are very high and distribution is expensive, I think you'll see more and more streaming. For blockbusters in a non-pandemic environment, I don't think you'll really see those go to streaming. And part of the reason is the economics don't work. If you you know, read some of Christopher Nolan's comments, he said streaming wasn't an option because you can't really generate the worldwide global box office. And I think Disney knows that as well, and Disney's a wonderful partner of IMAX, and in fact, you know, we've got so many movies in backlog with them, including The Kingsman, including Black Widow, many, many Marvel titles going forward, and IMAX is kind of a curator for the public about blockbusters, which is, you know, we help inform the public that this is really special, and, um, you know, Disney gets that and we get that, and I think Mulan, it's, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. Disney, I think, had moved it three or four times. They launched marketing. They took back marketing. And I think at this time, they just needed some certainty for that particular property. But they're in the blockbuster business, and they understand it as well as we do. Rich, before I let you go, you had joined us early on in the pandemic, and I mean, there's obviously the need for theaters to be open. It's 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 essential for a business like yours. But in the meantime, you had been navigating. Uh, you guys were in a position, I believe, where you felt the cash situation of your business allowed you to navigate through COVID-19. What is the single biggest thing that you were focusing as a CEO your energy on for the duration of the year? What what should we think about? Is the number one priority for you as a leader of this publicly traded company? Um, great question, John. I think it's um, convincing um, people, um, consumers, exhibitors, studios, that when you open a film in a safe environment, people are going to come and that the theater theatrical window is enduring. Because there were people that took advantage of the pandemic and different businesses and said, wait a minute, nobody's ever going to go back to the theater. You know, it's a business that's not going to survive. And in fact, the numbers from the last week, couple weeks around the world have shown it's not only going to survive, but it's going to thrive. And I think we need to keep proving that out to people, that it's safe to go back. Um, when you go back to a theater, being in that communal environment, hearing the music, the sound, seeing the image, it's escapist in a way people haven't been able to do from their living rooms. And I think we just need to reinforce that message um, as we wind through the remainder of the pandemic. 